have been noticing there's a lot of people getting married right now. And I thought that would be a fun theme to talk on a little bit. Young love. <laughs> I love love. I think it's so fun. New relationships. It's exciting. You're going to be like joining lives, connecting with someone on a level you never imagined connecting, <laughs> facing challenges you never imagined facing. Oh my goodness. I just figured out that this has a setting of a little bit higher, which is exactly what I needed and I couldn't figure it out at first. But if you're both committed to work through anything, you can. You can work through anything. When you're in love, that's the power of love. You really can. It's really worth it to get through the challenges and to get to the gold. But it does take some work and some commitment and faithfulness and praying to God and going after your own stuff too, not just assuming it's the other person's issues. When we first got married, I was 17 when we met, 18 when we got married, and I turned 19 10 days later. Ruslan was 22 and Boy, did we not know what was in store for us. <laughs> I had a bit of a fantasy mentality that because it was so God ordained that, you know, God told my mom that he was going to be my future husband before I even knew he liked me. And she held that as a secret for about seven months till he asked me to marry him. And that's when she revealed the secret. And I was just floored and so thankful. God just so divinely set it up. And that's the short story. I think I've told it to others, but I love our love story. I love love stories. They're so fun. But in that, I had such a fantasy mentality that this was going to be easy because God ordained it and it was going to be the happily ever after. But you know what I'm realizing now is that when God ordains something and he makes it very clear Sometimes it's so that when it gets really hard, we have that clear remembrance of the word that he gave us. This is me. Do not give up. Do not turn on each other. Do not despise. <laughs> That's a big word because he knew. Do not despise the day of small beginnings because you may feel like, okay, we got through all the wedding planning and all the things and we're so in love and now it all begins we're so happy and excited but that's actually when the work begins <laughs> because you begin to see the sides of each other that you did not see before you begin to uncover the things that were hidden and learn tools of communication well you know not to be arrogant but i was a little bit arrogant and naive i thought my husband's so lucky to marry me. I love the Lord. I love him. I'm not high maintenance. I am easy to please. This is going to be easy and exciting. Well, then we got married. Then we got pregnant on the honeymoon. And everything changed. My poor husband wondered who he married. I wondered who I married. What in the heck is this and why is it so hard and what's wrong with divorce? Our first year was very rough, but look at us now. Almost 23 years married and then so happy and in love. So it doesn't matter how hard it is. You really can work through it. A couple things that we learned was asking for help, letting people in. Do not try to go it alone. Um, Get tools, like read books, find a good, good Instagram account to follow. Marriage 365, they are very open and blunt and clear. They talk about every single subject. They're a really good resource. Nothing Hidden Ministries from Bethel, they're amazing. Also very open, very deep, super good. Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage, that's a fun one just to lighten the load and kind of get perspective again that men and women are so different. Something else would be 
Give it time. Have grace for the process. Let go of your fears. Do not expect perfection from each other. Give a ton of grace. Like you're stepping into a whole new world. You're both stepping into a brand new situation that you have not experienced before or it's very intense and you had a bad marriage before so you're wanting to do everything different. That's not necessarily the answer. But um, yeah, have lots of grace for each other. I truly expected that we would go in knowing it all, knowing how to do this. I expected my husband to be the spiritual head and to know what he's doing and to lead our family to victory in the Lord every day, leading prayer, getting prophetic words, having dreams, <laughs> whatever I expected. I don't even fully know, but he was not that. And I was more that, that was my strength. But I thought I wasn't allowed because he needed to lead it or else I was trying to lead it and that's not the way God wants it, etc. So it was like, I had to work through all kinds of stuff. He had to work through all kinds of stuff. He had a lot more grace and understanding for it taking time and just getting to know each other, uh, letting go of some of the super high expectations. He was more private and emotionally um, quiet. So he had to learn to open up more about his emotions. I had to learn to open up more about my emotions, which was shocking because I thought I was pretty open, forward, honest. But when I got married, it was like a magnifying glass on all my issues. Everything came to light, everything came to the surface. And I was shocked and so was he. And he had his stuff. I'm not saying it was all me, but I feel like I was more of the mess and I thought I was the amazing holy roller. <laughs> but he had a lot of patience for me, a lot of grace. And then also we had a lot of big fights and we had no rules. Like we didn't know how to fight well. So that's a huge key. Get some fight tools. You are going to disagree. You are going to think the other one is crazy and has crazy ideas. You need tools to handle disagreements and arguments. And a couple of our own made up ones right away was do not use the D word when you're fighting. Don't threaten divorce because it actually just feeds fear and puts that question mark in there. Like, are you really in this for good? Or are you just gonna leave the moment we have a, too big of a fight? Are you really committed? Or can I actually push you so far that you would leave? Yeah, I remember one time with one of our big fights, I was really freaked out. He had gone to work and I was just like, Lord, why is this so hard? Why do we so disagree? Why does it feel like we're not hearing each other? Why can it be like when I lived at home and I fight with my brother or my sister and I know we're going to be fine after. Just a fight. We'll get through it. It's going to be okay. And he said, that is what it's like. That's how you have to see it. You know, it's like we, we're going to run into things that we disagree with and we have to learn how to work through it. It doesn't mean you have a horrible marriage because you fight. It doesn't mean that you're not a match made in heaven because you completely disagree on some things. That was actually new information to me. I felt like, okay, I was wrong. This must not be from God. I screwed up. Um, and he was like, I don't know if this can work. We're too stubborn, you know, like, I mean, we're going through this in our inner thoughts, but that shift really helped me because I thought in my fantasy of marriage, if you were meant to be together, you would agree and just work through everything and you would never fight. I remember actually thinking that our goal could be that we would never argue or fight. Well, that's funny. <laughs> I think that just revealed how I didn't understand that conflict 
can lead to a deeper connection and confrontation is to actually bring a closer connection and understanding and you can strengthen the marriage by that. So that was a powerful shift for me. And I think I'll just leave you with that today. Conflict needs conflict resolution tools. So don't feel bad that you're fighting. Don't feel bad that you see things from opposite sides of the universe. You're coming together to bring two personalities, two powerful people together and to work as a team. So you have to have tons of grace for each other. Really good listening skills. Listen to understand, not listen to defend, listen to explain, listen to throw in your side of the argument. Listen to understand. And the simplest tool that I'll offer with that is as you listen, try to repeat back to that person what you are hearing. Because I would listen with, I know what you just meant by that and I cannot believe you said that. Blah, 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 blah. Well, instead of, it sounds like you are saying that I suck as a mom. And then, you know, if I were to actually say that, then he could have been like, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I hate a messy table. You know, things like that to where we so read into it, we assume we know exactly what they meant. <laughs> but that's a huge life-saving tool is to say, it sounds like you mean this. Or when you're saying that, I feel this. That's a huge one. Hopefully this was helpful and relationships are hard. They take time, they take work, they take effort and patience and grace of God and healing yourself with the Lord as well. Don't give up, don't be discouraged. God is in it. He created us and he made opposites attract. <laughs>